Hey everyone, it's Brad Ross from MakeMagicMoney.com and welcome to our very special presentation of the webinar series, Kadabra, a look inside the Kadabra 2010 conference. I am very excited to uh, be welcoming a, uh, a wonderful panel of experts uh, from the kid show and family entertainment world, including uh, a very special person, uh, our uh, president of Kidabra, uh, the organization, the international organization. We've got uh, Ken Scott on board. Well, I'll tell you who's on board in just a few minutes. But before we get into all the details and, and officially start our webinar, I just want to go over a quick uh, little bit of housekeeping. Those of you that are joining us for the first time on a webinar, uh, you should see something like this on your uh, computer screen and this is a sample panel uh, of basically what your computer screen would look like of course this background with the trees is just happens to be the, the screensaver or rather the desktop wallpaper in this uh, example but uh, what we're looking at over here where you can see my mouse that is your control panel and that's what is going to give you the power to ask questions to um, either call in if you have a question towards the end there's a phone number where you can be calling in if you want to listen or if you have to step away from the computer and you still want to listen but you don't want to uh, miss out you can feel free to do so and uh, let me show you a little bit about how that control panel works uh, to open and close your control panel, you simply click that little orange arrow that you can see is highlighted with the red box. When you click that, it will shrink your control panel like so. And if you want to expand it, you simply click it again and bam, it will open up like so. Now you uh, can also get a full screen view right like that. And uh, this is very important. This is the audio panel. This provides your audio information. Again, uh, by default, you guys are all muted, and uh, you will not be able to speak unless uh, you have a very specific question that you cannot enter into the question box, which I'll explain in just a second. And you do want to speak with us, you can either use your microphone and speakers on your computer, or you can use the telephone and dial the number that you see there. Uh, and just click that, and there's the phone number. Not the phone number that's on your that that's here. That's not what you want to dial into. You want to dial into the one that's on your control panel. Uh, and there's, of course, is the audio pin uh, that you would be using. Again, only the the numbers that show up on your screen, not the ones in this sample. Now, to submit questions, I will be uh, taking questions throughout the webinar uh, if they are uh, urgent and related to what I or the other speakers are going to be talking about. Uh, we'll also have have a uh, designated Q&A period for the end of the webinar, but uh, if you are worried that you might forget your question or you do have something that's urgent, feel free to just enter your question into the question box on your panel and that will come directly to us and the staff can also take a look at that, uh, my fellow panelists, you guys can access the questions right there as well. If you'd like to raise your hand, if you have something very urgent, you don't have to raise your hand to use the restroom, but if you do have something very urgent and you want to raise your hand, there's a little button that's right over here to the left of your control panel, and it is a little hand with a green arrow. If you click that in our, um, in our interface, we can see that you're raising your hand, and I can be able to uh, answer your specific question. So again, if you have something very urgent, feel free to do that. And uh, at the same token, I can also tell if you are paying attention or not. If you are surfing Facebook or YouTube or doing anything else on your computer, I'll know if you're paying attention to the webinar. So just be careful what you're doing. I'm, I'm right to my hand, and i got to go pee. You got, well, Ken, you don't have to worry about that. You can go. <laughs> <laughs> and again, the uh, the Q and A's will be addressed. Uh, we'll make sure to leave some uh, designated time for that at the end. And uh, there will be a replay, as I mentioned earlier. Uh, and we should have that all edited and put together within the next 24 to 48 hours. So I will get that uh, out to all of you, so you can uh, visit with us anytime you want at your leisure. Now a word from the president, but not that president. He he's got too much to work to deal with right now, so we uh, we we couldn't get him on to give you a word. So instead, we've brought this guy, the president we all know and love, Mr. Very Mark cute, Brad. Very cute. Oh, <laughs> uh, Mark Daniel here. Good evening, everybody. Um, and Brad, I by the way, uh, some people know this. Uh, the, I think the word's gotten out a bit, but. Uh, I want to be one of the folks to congratulate you 
because uh, you're about to go high profile over the next few weeks, uh, back with uh, back on tour with Disney Live all over the United States, uh, coming this fall and winter, I believe. That is it, that is correct. I Congratulations! Think that is awesome, my friend, and Thank you're going to be you. coming uh, to towns and cities uh, far and near. It is it is true. After uh, a little break from. Being on the road, I, I took a break from Disney Live, as most of you know, last uh, spring and summer. And and uh, after having a little bit of a break, I will uh, be heading out on the road in uh, September for my fifth consecutive year uh, touring with uh, Disney Live Presents Mickey's Magic Show. And well, like like you said, Mark, we will be heading to a, a theater or arena near you this, uh, this fall, winter, and spring. So... Uh, I will certainly look forward to the opportunity to uh, visiting your hometown and, uh, and maybe even grabbing a bite with you after the show. Look forward to seeing you very much. And, you know, it's, uh, what a treat this is tonight. It, it, it's so much fun to, to hear everybody's voice and uh, look forward to seeing everybody in person in, what, two and a half weeks, three weeks now until uh, Cadabra conference starts. But, you know, it's so funny to me, uh, Brad, uh, uh, I was thinking about my week this week. Uh, I, I, I've, uh, I'm, I'm in the uh, the last couple of weeks of the uh, the summer library tour. Uh, I uh, and you know people, it's so funny. People outside of the performing world think that I'm not sure what they think, but they don't quite understand what it is we do to to, to actually arrive on site and and do a performance. You know, I was um, I was fiddling around Tuesday after a show with my uh, with my music uh, editing a. a a new little sound effect, and this is Tuesday of this week, and my music crashed completely. I lost everything. I lost my entire uh, summer show. And, so, and Mark, you should uh, say that you you do use eight tracks. So, I well, mean. Uh, you know, they, <laughs> they, they, they've been reliable all these years. <laughs> there you but, go. <laughs> uh, so I, I had dinner with uh, Joe Leffler the other night, and I called him about something yesterday, and um, uh, and Joe said. Um, What's up? I told him about my music crashing. He gave me a couple little tips. I spent 10 hours in the studio yesterday re-recording my summer show, 10 hours. And uh, I have a backup now, which I didn't have before, thanks to Joe. But, uh, you know, I've got, I, I had my show this morning. I went to get my hair done this afternoon. I was there for two hours getting my hair done. I've got a photo shoot tomorrow for pictures for the school tour coming up this, this, uh, this uh, uh, fall. And... You know, it just never ends, and it's so much fun, but it's it's just crazy busy all the time to be able to do what we do and make a living full-time or even part-time. It's a whole lot of work, and uh, one of the fun things about tonight, talking about biz builders uh, coming up, the optional biz builders at Cadaver Conference, uh, is that that's what that's about, and that's what we have such great people to, to teach and talk about uh, uh, in that regard, you, you know, I uh, we used to call those days marketing days, but I found out something. I found out that people could sell a show, but uh, a lot of people could sell a show, but what were they selling? And then there's the rest of that. Oh, you know, I don't know I mean, how many times you've heard, um, it's good this, uh, you know, we won't go into uh, your show. We're sure you have a good show, but here's how to sell it. Well, no. I'd like for to see people have a really strong uh, uh, performance and then be able to sell it. And so that that's kind of how Biz Builders came about. And that's what we do every year at Cadaver Conference in general, too, is work on performance. Every angle uh, is what we study. And I've learned something about Brad and about Ken Scott and about Emmanuel and about Joe Leffler and about David Farr and about so many of the people that are on the Cadaver staff, uh, actually everybody, they are, stu they are lifetime students. The best performers that I've met from around the world are insatiably curious about everything. I know Eddie Wade's on the call tonight. Eddie is just, he wants to know about everything. And I think that is, that is awesome. It is what makes the best performers. And that's what we explore constantly at the conference year-round with Cadaver, through the journal, and with each other as we network. Yeah, that that. Thank you so much, Mark, for for sharing that because that, uh, as you know, and as you mentioned just a moment ago, that is uh, something that I'm very passionate about, and all of my subscribers and 
uh, coaching clients and, uh, and customers that are here on the call tonight know that that's something I'm a very big advocate of is uh, being a student of life and and really continuing to improve because I, I you know always go back to the same quote which is uh, one that I have on the back of my bulletin board right here at the computer by Marianne Williamson which is our greatest fear is not that we are inadequate but that we are powerful beyond measure and that is wow. that is really true we are we are so powerful and so powerful beyond measure that uh, when we can all come together and help each other and educate one another and learn from one another especially in a nurturing environment like uh, the Cadabra conference uh, great things can happen and uh, you know I like to think of Cadabra as that pot of gold at the end of the rainbow that when you discover it the riches that are to be found are uh, are just uh, enormous because it is like this if you've never if, if people have never heard of Cadabra and then they discover it and Mark you and I talked about this when I first discovered it when you guys did that uh, that that VHS videotape back in I guess 2000 or 2001? 2000, yeah, for the yeah 2001 for the 10th anniversary. 2001, right. and I discovered this world of Cadabra, and I thought, holy smokes, wh where did that? Wh where I'd never heard about this. This is unbelievable, and um, and and it's just it's this great great place and I'm thrilled to uh, to be a part of it and and to be able to share even just a, a very small glimpse of it with everybody tonight on the webinar you know it's interesting uh, uh, Brad you're uh, a few years younger than I am uh, my friend Joe Leffler is a few years older than I am every time I talk to Joe I just sit and uh, with my mouth open I learn and I learn and I learn every time I talk to you I learn and I learn and I learn my friend Ken Scott every time I sit with him we talk I, you don't it, learn. You, know. you don't learn. You don't learn from me. They just talk. They, he doesn't learn. They just talk. <laughs> it's uh, you know what an incredible environment this is, and what amazing friends we've made over the years uh, through through all of this. It's uh, it's been a wonderful blessing. And uh, and speaking of that, Kenneth, Ken Scott, welcome, welcome this evening. We're delighted to have you. you with us. Thank you very uh, much. Okay, <laughs> thanks for that. We'll we'll, and, we'll do the uh, official welcome in a minute, but before before we do that, speaking of uh, of friends, I uh, uh, all of us uh, are, are probably aware at this point that uh, our our very dear friend Bruce Bray is still recovering uh, from an accident he had a few months ago. And Ken, why, why don't you give us an update on Bruce? Yeah, um, you know we, we're keeping in touch with obviously his family. I know uh, David Kay went to visit him today, and uh, uh, our his close friend, our close friend Bill Ford. I talk to him on a regular basis. You know, first I, I think you know not to be a Debbie Downer, but you know Bruce was really he's really hurt. I mean he was hurt really bad. And when we say recover, I mean Bruce is at a different point right now as a patient. Uh, he's not in hospital anymore. He's at a rehab facility rehabbing, but he has a long road ahead. But he's making some baby steps, which is uh, a, a huge huge step. But he's got a long way to go, and he's not the Bruce that we know. Um, you know, if you if you know Bruce, you, it's not the Bruce we know right now, but he is making some some huge strides, I think, and um, you know we hope to get Bruce back to you know to what we used to know as Bruce, uh, and we we hope that happens. But right now, right now, it's just rehabbing, rehabbing very heavy with him. He's rehabbing a lot, and uh, they got him up walking, they got him up doing different things, and you know sometimes he's with it sometimes he's not but i mean to have a conversation with him is not happening but you know the the cool thing was he picked up a sponge ball today and he he did a trick for the nurse and he made the ball vanish so that's a that's big for it that's big for those who that are in the know with him that's huge cuz he has been in he's in such bad shape and and for us to hear that it's a promising that you know he may be able to get back on on some sort of uh you know stability where we 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 once knew Bruce yeah. So that's what we're hoping. And how uh, we, we still we still have a website set up for Bruce uh, for uh, donations, correct? Bruce Bray Fund. Yes, Bruce Bray Fund, and you know, we, and I know they're trying to keep that updated with uh, updates as far as Bruce's uh, condition. It's not being updated as often, just because of, you know, stuff doesn't come in as often as, as we, we need it because the yeah, different Tad travels. Yeah, receives uh, things direct from Bruce's mom, uh, right. and she sends things, and that's when we when we send stuff up. Right. So, uh, yeah, th there's often updates on there, and you can leave well wishes on there, uh, which his mom reads and, and reads to him at the hospital or at the rehab facility. So, 
uh, they're not going unseen by, by him and his family for sure. And of course, um, obviously, we we all know that uh, the economy can be tough at times, depending on where you are in the country, in the world. But uh, if there's anything that you can potentially spare, you know, even if it's just a few extra dollars, um, and make a, a donation to Bruce, you know, he's still uh, his business is still uh, up and running in a different kind of capacity. Uh, he's got people covering some shows for him and. His, uh, his, his house is still in existence, and uh, all of his other bills are still there. So in effort to kind of keep, um, keep things afloat while he is going through this recovery period, any donation that you could make is, is certainly much appreciated. Absolutely. Yeah, great, great guy. We, we can't wait to see him back, back in action. One of, one you know, of I, I joke about. because uh, I joke about that because I, uh, you know, me and Bruce would talk literally every day, and, and there was times I would talk to him from my office and, uh, and uh, or my cell phone, and I noticed my cell phone numbers have gone down dramatically because I don't talk to him. So <laughs> now, I, you know, I, I'm calling more people because if I'm driving on the roads from different shows, I'm like trying to stay awake so we can call each other. And uh, now I'm calling Mark more often. And and we need you. Uh, <laughs> Bruce, you please hurry, hurry up back. <laughs> I, I would call. I would. I know. I I would call David K. And David K. would tell him. Bruce has got to get better because I can't take these phone calls anymore from Ken Scott. So. <laughs> oh, but, th thank but it's you good. It's good that, that we can laugh. It's good that we can laugh about it. But we do we do miss Bruce a lot. I mean, I, 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 I absolutely. I, it's yeah. So. One of the best birthday party guys in the world. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And I'm I'm a big uh, believer in in positive thoughts and in positive energy. And I uh, I know that uh, I'm sitting just maybe five or ten miles away from where Bruce is in his rehabilitation center here in New Jersey. And uh, Bruce, if, uh, if positive energy and positive thinking works, uh, we are all we're we're thinking of you right now. And uh, God willing, we will uh, have you back on this webinar next uh, next uh, July talking about what you're going to be doing at Cadabra 2011. Amen. Amen. Thoughts and prayers. Thank you. So with that being said, we are uh, ready to uh, begin our uh, the meat of tonight's uh, call or tonight's webinar. And as you know, uh, Mark and I are on hand. Uh, my, my good buddy David Farr uh, was supposed to be here. He is my partner in crime in Internet uh, marketing, and he will be with me uh, when we do our workshop at the Business Builders, which I'll tell you a little bit more about uh, later in the, in the webinar. Unfortunately, uh, David's grandma uh, had an accident. She she, uh, she fell, and she is in the hospital, and so David was uh, going to see her at the hospital. Was not sure what time he's going to be back, so he may or may not join us this evening, uh, but I will certainly uh, fill you in on what David and I are going to be talking about uh, at the uh, Business Builders. Uh, we've got Shaboom all the way down in Shaboom. Puerto Rico. <laughs> Very and happy to be here. Welcome hey, to the call. Well, welcome. We are well, we are. We are we're down here in Puerto Rico, and we're ready to talk a little bit about Magic on TV, which is a topic I'm, I'm very sure uh, most of you are interested in. Uh, so we've got a couple of things we're going to talk about tonight, and a lot more uh, at the Kidabra. Excellent. Well, welcome aboard, my friend. Thank you. Thank you. And, of course, you've already heard him speak tonight, uh, the rascal himself uh, from down there in the Deep South, Mr. Kenny Scott. Welcome Hello. officially, Ken. <laughs> Look at that Magic Castle picture. Look at that good-looking guy. It's very styling, Ken. Thank you. And right next to that good-looking guy is, is Ken Scott, so uh, glad to have <laughs> <laughs> And uh, Mr. B.J. Hickman is, uh, is, is here with us. B.J., I think you are um, – we had a little bit of trouble with B.J. Uh, getting him on as a, uh, a panelist, but I will um, – let me see. I'm going to try and unmute you right now, BJ. Are you still here? BJ, uh, you are unmuted now. Can, try saying hello, BJ. Uh, all right. I'm going to leave you unmuted, BJ. Um, make sure you called into that phone number that's uh, in the audio section there, uh, or if you're using a microphone on your computer, make sure that it does work. Your, your best bet is to call in on the phone number that you see on the dashboard. It's underneath the audio panel, BJ, because uh, I've got you unmuted now, and I don't hear you. So I think the best bet is for you to call in on the phone number that's there. And in addition to Mr. B.J. Hickman, uh, Mr. Joe Leffler is also supposed to be joining us. Um, 
And I do not see that he is with us yet, so hopefully uh, everything is all right and he will join us a little bit later on in the call. So with that being said, uh, oh, I almost forgot about uh, tonight's prizes. I, I did allude to uh, this in one of the emails that we sent out, uh, that tonight there was going to be some uh, very cool high dollar prizes uh, offered for the attendees here. Those of you that uh, this is your first time on one of my webinars, uh, this is my Dove Pan O'Luck. And uh, while some of the other presenters are speaking, I will actually be printing out a list of our attendees and uh, putting those on little pieces of paper that I toss into the Dove Pan of Luck. And then at the end of the call, uh, we will be giving out three sets of prizes at random to the names I pull out of the Dove Pan of Luck. And uh, they are all three prizes. me up, Brad. You, you really do sit there and... I really do. You, you, if, if there's ever a dead time, you might hear me cutting up little pieces of paper because I really will be doing that. I love that. When the technology advances and I have a video camera that's here in my office and you can see me on the webinar, you'll see me sitting here cutting them up. <laughs> And so the tonight's prizes that are going to be given out uh, are furnished by me here at MakeMagicMoney.com uh, for the first set of prizes, which is uh, Top Hat Treasury of Family Entertainers, a uh, fabulous book that features uh, many of the people that you're going to be hearing from tonight on the call, including uh, Ken Scott, Mark Daniel, and myself. And this was a book that was put together by our buddy uh, Steve Kissel a couple of years back. And uh, just a great, great book filled with all kinds of uh, war stories from from all of our experiences performing everywhere from uh, birthday parties to school shows, theme parks, uh, touring, shopping malls, pretty much anything a family entertainer could ever do, uh, our stories are shared in this, in this fun book. So I'm giving away one of those, uh, $35 value, and also going to be giving away uh, a double audio CD set at John Carlson, uh, one of uh, New Jersey's busiest birthday party magicians. Uh, or one of the Northeast's busiest birthday party magicians. Uh, John and I did this uh, double audio CD series a couple years ago, filled with great information. Can be giving that away another uh, twenty-five dollar value. So uh, that is going to go to someone from my prize package. Uh, Mr. Mark Daniel uh, has furnished a nice gift from Kidabra, which is the uh, Terry Herbert Kid Show Superstars. If you want to share a blurb about that, Mark. Oh, this was a fantastic um, uh, recorded law. Uh, uh, um DVD recorded live at Cadabra uh, with Terry uh, being interviewed by David Kay, and it is fan. I mean, it's fabulous. Uh, it just uh, Terry is just so warm and so entertaining, so genuinely funny and knowledgeable. Uh, it's just you just sit down and watch this and just just fall in love with him. He's incredible. So, uh, and what is what is the retail value of that, Mark? I believe that's around thirty dollars. Thirty dollars, and we're going to be giving that away absolutely free. And our final prize is furnished by Mr. Ken Scott, KenScottProducts.com, and uh, that is uh, your library. Which Mark, what did you call this? You said a million dollars worth of information. Oh yeah, yeah, uh, yeah, a million dollar DVD. Absolutely. Million dollar DVD. Well, tell us a little bit about that, Ken Scott. Well, I'm not sure a million dollars, but uh, it's definitely more. It's worth more than I sell it. I. You know, it was a. It, this was a. Uh, it tended to be a product to sell, as my back of the room sales, which I I love back of the room sales stuff that shows, and uh, I sell a lot of these to um, you know families. And it's basically a show I did five, uh, four years ago. It's a full library show from start to finish, uh, and then the 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 backside of it is I, I go in and I teach kids tricks. So the the regular magician may not get anything out of that. Although you could see how I went into a studio and. And taught the kids tricks, and might be an idea for someone else to, to um, you know, put together their own DVD. Uh, but I sold a lot of these, and once so someone said you should sell these to magicians, so I did. Uh, but I think the just the routining, how I'm using music and so forth in the act, uh, I think is worth a lot of money. And I think I've, it's on my website for I don't know twenty nine dollars or something like that. It's uh, uh, but it's 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 a good product. I like it. In fact, we're we're about to record number two because a lot of my Clients have this already, so we're going to do another uh, second uh, shooting. 
Excellent. Well, that is another uh, $30 value given away absolutely for free uh, this evening, and we're going to be doing that again at the end of tonight's call. Now, uh, just uh, another little uh, tidbit for those of you that have never been on one of these webinars. We do like to keep them interactive here, so we will be launching some polls during the course of our webinar. And tonight, before we uh, get started with uh, Mr. Ken, who's going to be sharing some info with us uh, about what he's going to be doing at Cadabra and his experiences at Cadabra, we're going to do a little bit of poll here and find out what type of a performer are you. So uh, let's launch this poll. You will see it show up on your screen. Are you a full-time performer, a part-time performer, or just someone who really enjoys magic and, and the family variety arts and someday hope to become a performer? And uh, just go ahead and click on one of those. We've got 65% of the vote in there, 70%. Let's see if we can get up to 100% uh, of the vote in. All right, got some interesting numbers here. All right, 76% of the vote. Can we get a couple more people, 79%. Give a couple more people an opportunity to vote. We're going to close it down in 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. And with 84% of our vote in... We've got uh, wow, some interesting numbers there. 56% uh, of you are full-time, 41% are part-time, and 3% uh, are uh, lovers of the arts of magic and the, and the related art forms and uh, hope to someday become uh, either a part-time or a full-time guy. So does that, is, that, is that of interest to you, Mark? I know you were very curious about that. I, uh, I'm uh, fascinated by this. This is great. Fantastic. Amazing. Yeah. Well, we've definitely got lots of information for everybody, the full-time, the part-time, and the someday folks. We definitely have lots of info uh, to share with you guys tonight. And uh, with that being said, let's turn everything over to our buddy, Mr. Ken Scott. And Ken's going to talk to us a little bit about what he's going to be doing at Cadabra this year and, and share some of his wisdom, his pearls with us. Yes, thank you, uh, Brad. Uh, first, I, I, want, I should say uh, Cadabra is the one conference or place that I I've always write down in my book whether I'm performing or lecturing or, or, or not in my book every year just because it's it's usually after a very busy library season I can go and I lose work every year just like anybody else would lose work um, but I think the the information uh, and the downtime I get from being there is f far outweighs uh, from you know me losing those shows uh, that I would get now if there's a huge show, then, Mark, I'm going to lie to you. I'm going to take the show. I'm going to be honest with you. But uh, uh, for the most part, I, I turn down shows, and, and I think we all do, and it's a commitment that we all should make to go to it because, it, to me, Cadaver is one of those that really energizes me. I'm able to turn the battery off a little bit but then re-energize and get ready to go back to work the next week. So uh, uh, it, it's that that's great in itself. Uh, things that I'm doing this year, uh, I'm actually going to be a student this year, I guess you could say, uh, I, I love being directed, and I think that's one thing that magicians, we as performers, we don't have enough direction. Uh, we don't have enough people telling us that we're flashing or not, not you know, I mean flashing like the bad, you know, not the bad. Anyway, you know what I'm talking about. Uh, but uh, we, so Max Howard is doing a thing this year where he's taking three of three of us, I think Glenn Strange, uh, Tim Sonnefeld, myself, and we're going to do it on day one, I believe. Mark, you can correct me if I'm wrong, but we're going to do a routine that we were inspiring to, to work on and make better, and we're going to do it as we do it, or as we're trying to do it right now. And then, that's right. That's on Thursday during the conference. That's right. And then as the week goes on, um, Max will be working with us privately, and you'll see the progress of these tricks, of these routines, uh, hopefully get to once Max touches on it and gives us different direction that we need to go in. And hopefully by Saturday you'll see the routine as a different, uh, a different presentation with his twist and turns on it. So that's that's I think that right there is in, is invaluable. Just uh, whether you agree with what he has to say or not, you can learn how what we how we changed it and how you could change things that you think are okay. A lot of times we look at routines in our show, and we think they're okay because we see it from our mind. But if if someone else sees it, we can make it better by letting someone else look at the routine. And I think Max is going to do that. So that's uh, that's one. Uh, the other thing I, I'm hosting the competition like we did last year, which I'm kind of excited about. I guess you're Ryan Seacrest of uh, host. It would be like. Um, and I'm excited about that, and hopefully uh, that's going to be fun. And I think last year was was our first year. We got our we learned a lot from last year, and I think this year is going to be even better uh, with the competition. I know the acts are, are, are 
getting excited about performing and being in the contest. So that'll be fun, and we got some prizes uh, that we're going to be doing in that as well. Uh, and then the one thing that we started a couple years ago is my late night jam sessions. You know, these are really just geared towards just to hang out, nothing, uh, in, nothing formal. It's really just informal, just very casual, just talking and hanging out in the lobby. And honestly, I think some of these are the best ideas come out from these little jam sessions. Uh, I was talking to Mark Wade last year during my little jam session, my little party, and he gave me an invaluable tip last year that I'm using this year on trying to find grants and stuff for schools. Uh, and I probably would not have gotten that unless we were just sitting there talking uh, in that little party last year. So uh, that's going to be on one of the nights, late nights, so in the lobby like we did last year. So that's what I got my hands in this year. Oh, and Ken, you're also the uh, the host of Ms. Builders. I'm sorry. There's a there's a miss there's a bad connection here. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. He's <laughs> <laughs> a busy fellow, Brad. <laughs> it, so, something something's going on with Ken's uh, microphone there, I guess, <laughs> or is his, his speakers perhaps? Well, excellent. Well, we're uh, certainly looking forward to having you there, and uh, you know, I think those of you that have been to Cadabra before, uh, or those of you that um, are going to be there for the first time, uh, I think you'll really enjoy. Uh, one of the things that I always enjoy, which is, just like Ken said, all those opportunities to network and to learn from one another, even outside of the session rooms and outside of the formal presentations, uh, whether it be through just uh, grabbing a cup of coffee, breakfast, or, or having a meal with someone. Uh, you know, that's what it's all about. It's all about learning. So don't be afraid to go up to people and, uh, and ask if they can, uh, you know, if they'd like to join you for a meal. And um, it's all about the network, Absolutely. right? Absolutely. And, Brad, that's, that's a very important thing about this convention is that uh, – uh, there's no stars. I mean, everybody's in the same thing. Everybody's trying to do the same thing, performing for families, kid shows. Uh, we're all doing the same thing. So I think we all learn from each other. Like I mm -hmm. said, I've learned from guys who are not on the, on, as a lecturer, as a performer. They're just there attending. And I've learned boatloads from these people. So uh, feel free to come to, up to me. I'm going to come up to you. And it, that's how the cadaver works, and that's how it functions every year, is by uh, just willing to open up and, and uh, help each other out. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. So we'll certainly all be looking forward to uh, to that. Well, thanks, Ken, for uh, sharing all that info. Feel free to chime in as uh, as you'd like throughout the rest of our time together. Uh, BJ uh, Hickman, uh, you are unmuted. Uh, just verify that we can hear you. Say a little something. Hello. Ah, we've got BJ. Wonderful. Yeah, I've been holding my breath all this time. You know, I was here the last time you called for me, but... Uh... For some reason, I, I think I didn't hit my PIN number, and that's what did it. It was my fault. Yeah. Got... <laughs> well, BJ, it is a pleasure to have you on here. We'll be uh, introducing you for you to share some of uh, your great uh, uh, information in just a little bit. But, um, again, feel free to chime in if anything strikes your, uh, your interest uh, during the rest of the presentations. Thank you. And uh, I think we have uh, Mr. Joe Leffler on. Joe, can you hear us? I think Joe can probably hear us. He's he's signed in. Uh, Joe, is your microphone working? Okay, Joe, uh, your microphone is not um, broadcasting to us, so what you may want to do is just call in on the phone number that uh, is on your audio panel, uh, and we'll uh, we'll try you again in just uh, just a little bit here. So uh, it's time for another poll. This was something Mark and I, Mark and I were talking about this earlier. By the way, I'm this little green guy over here. I, I which, love the line of. Folks I don't know which ones the rest of you are, but <laughs> I've got to cast your ballot here. We're going to launch another poll, and uh, we, Mark and I, were curious to find out uh, who is your audience. Uh, you know, there's so many different uh, types of family entertainment that there is. So we want to know who the heck do you perform for? So are you a birthday party guy? Or girl, are you someone who performs in schools and uh, daycares? Do you do corporate events? Do you perform for religious groups? Uh, or do you do fairs and festivals? And feel free to vote uh, as you wish if you do all of those or two of those or however many of those you'd like. I think it's safe to say that we all do family entertainment, so we didn't we didn't put that in there, but. <laughs> All right, got 69% of the vote and 71% of the vote. Come on, let's see if we can get past 80%, gang. Let's get it up there. 76, come on, a couple more people vote in there. Close your Facebook and, and check check our, uh, our little boxes there. 76%. We're going to close it down in 3, 2,
and one. All right, with 76% of the vote in. Uh, wow, it looks like the majority wow. of our, our nice. people are birthday party performers at 88%. Uh, 75% to uh, the schools and daycare markets, uh, following up in third place with uh, fairs and festivals, another popular one. Uh, and then fourth place is uh, the religious groups, synagogues, churches, and the like. And 47% uh, do corporate events, so uh, excellent. Was that kind of what you guys? Was that kind of what you guys expected? Uh, yes. Yeah, I can. That looks uh, very interesting. Yeah. Yeah. Very, very good. Well, uh, again, there's stuff for uh, lots of great content at Cadaver for uh, all of those various areas uh, of, of interest. So uh, certainly look forward to that. Now, up next, it looks like I am going to be flying solo here since, uh, since my buddy David is not uh, with us just yet. Um, and uh, we will uh, certainly look forward to having David at Cadabra. I really wanted to introduce him to uh, many of you folks that are not familiar with him this evening because this will be David's first time uh, speaking at Cadabra. He is uh, looking very much forward to it, and uh, he is just a, uh, a whiz when it comes to uh, computers and the Internet, and uh, he is certainly one of my best friends uh, in the uh, magic business and, uh, and outside of the magic business I talk to him pretty much on a daily basis and there is rarely a question about internet uh, anything that David cannot handle so I am proud to be associated with, uh, with my buddy David Farr and uh, we, we started working on, on this whole concept of uh, doing a, a hands-on workshop back last year uh, it was uh, shortly after uh, David and I had attended a couple different marketing conferences, uh, some inside of the magic community and some outside of the magic community. And David and I started saying, you know, there's just a lot of people that have so many questions when it comes to Internet marketing. And the year is 2010. Uh, and, of course, at the time it was, it was 2009. But it, we're living in a society, in a world, where things are happening so fast. And just when you think you understand I've got a website and now I should have the shows coming in or just when you understand how to finally create that Google AdWord or upload a video to YouTube bam the rules change and now there's some new technique or something explodes like what YouTube has done or what Facebook has done and so on and so forth and we started toying around with this idea of doing this workshop uh, called everything I've always wanted to know about internet marketing but thought was too stupid to ask and that, that's really what we discovered even among our own customers who were uh, having lots and lots of questions about Internet marketing but didn't want to ask the basics to us like, hey, Brad, or hey, Dave, how do you upload a video to YouTube and put it on my website? I know it's a silly question, but hey, how do you I do wanna, it? I want to jump in for a second. Yeah. I'll tell you why I'm so ex excited and interested in what you guys are going to do is that I look at, at, at you know, I'm out busy doing shows. All of my friends uh, are out busy doing shows. We all know that we need to be doing this stuff, but we, we don't know how, and, and we're, like, overwhelmed, and we don't know where to start, and, and well, again, and we, need, we know we need to be doing it. This is, this is big stuff, but, like, you know, Facebook, I don't get it, you know, and, uh, <laughs> and YouTube, I watch it, but I don't know how to send the videos up, so this is, this is huge stuff. Yeah, and it's it's so important because this is, you know, it, those of you guys that uh, have been involved in marketing for a little bit and uh, were maybe students of Dave D, you know, back, uh, you know, 10 plus years ago, uh, a lot of people in marketing and, and in magic, you know, thought this Internet stuff, it's just a fad, it's a trend, it's, it's not going to last. Well, guys, guess what? It, it is not a, a trend. It is a uh, an ever-growing thing. And what I've experienced um, that is just, I think, one of the uh, most amazing things about the Internet is it is growing and expanding so quickly that if you decide to ignore it, you are just going to get buried in the technology and it's going to be that much harder to catch up which is again why David and I said you know we want to do not just a lecture not a presentation on you know here's all the great stuff that we can do or, or that you know internet marketers can do but no 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 we wanted to do a hands-on workshop 
And, and Mark was generous enough to give us that opening spot on Tuesday night for three hours because that, and even that is just going to be a tip of the iceberg, but we are going to work with you hands-on and take you through a lot of the simple things, explain a lot of the things that can be interpreted as complex, and also be there to work with you on your, your challenges and answer those questions that maybe you, you, you're unsure of or questions that come up right then and there. And, uh, and that's what we're so excited about when it comes, uh, when it comes to Internet marketing and, and websites and, and all of that. And when we really think about it, gang, the world's largest stage is the Internet. Here's a couple of quick facts for you. Uh, this is the number of estimated Internet users as of a year ago. Okay, so a little over a year ago, 2009, 1 billion over, I mean, look at the, these numbers, estimated Internet users. That's the amount of people that are online doing business, uh, social media, all, I mean, it's just huge. It is literally the world's largest stage. And you have the potential to reach an audience of millions. You look at the people who are, considered YouTube celebrities now, well, they were just regular people like, like you and I, but they have managed to harness that power of the Internet and reach millions and millions of people. It's just, it's just extraordinary to be able to do that and at the same time have impact all over the world. Uh, Web 2.0, which, which is what David and I are going to be talking about, Web 2.0 really defines the way websites are interactive these days, uh, social media, uh, that's all considered Web 2.0, uh, you blogging, Facebook, all of that stuff is all part of the Web 2.0 and, and what we consider an interactive arena. So we're going to be talking quite a bit about that at our workshop. Uh, and, and also a lot of user-friendly platforms like Facebook and Twitter and YouTube that you're able to use to connect with one another. You know, one of the basic things when it comes to business is customers, clients, they do business with people they know, like, and trust. And what social media has done is allowed people that don't know you from anywhere to get to know you, to get to like you, and to get to trust you which is where the power of video marketing is online. And, and you know, we're not talking about Hollywood productions. In fact, uh, one of the attendees that's going to be at our, uh, our workshop, our, who actually we just confirmed this last night and found out that uh, one, of my, uh, one of my customers at Make Magic Money, Charlie Siebert, um, who is a, is a great guy right here in, in Jersey, Dr. Funny Bone, and he's a part-time magician. He's a full-time doctor, actually, a medical examiner. And uh, and Charlie is going to be at our internet workshop. And I was talking with him last night at our uh, Kadabra Chapter 10 meeting. And I said, "Hey, would, you're going to be at the workshop. We're going to use you as an example. Is that all right?" And he said, "Sure." And I asked him if he had video on his website. And he said, "Well, not really. That nothing that shows my personality." And I said, "Well, we're going to do an example, and we're going to show you how, in a matter of minutes." we can shoot a personality driven video with a simple flip cam or digital camera that records video and audio and instantly be able to upload that to YouTube put that up onto his website and be able to start building that relationship where his customers that visit the website can get to know him like him and trust him and we're gonna show you how you can do the exact same thing and, and we're gonna do it during the first part of that three-hour workshop so that's gonna be very very cool we're gonna talk about Facebook we're gonna talk about what the purpose of it is and how you can use it in your business and look at these statistics here guys currently there's more than 400 million active Facebook users remember that statistic I gave you from last year from the internet if we uh, go back a couple slides uh, 1 billion over 1 billion internet users well there's 400 million Facebook users that's a pretty high percentage of people on the internet that are all using Facebook and more than 50 percent of these are active users logging into Facebook on any given day and more even more than that if we were to examine the statistics even closer, people log into Facebook an average of three times a day for approximately 17 to 20 minutes per login. 
So if you add that up, if you round it to 20 minutes, 2, 4, 6, 60 minutes, people are spending an hour a day on Facebook. If you are on there and you're actively updating your status, if you're actively, uh, if you've got ads that are targeted, that's a beautiful thing that we're going to discuss with you at the workshop about, uh, about Facebook is how you can target your ads so much that if Ken Scott wanted to target people that said they were teachers only in Duluth, Georgia, in other words, people who are living in Duluth, Georgia, and there's something about teaching in the statistics and in their profile on Facebook, Ken's ad can show up only for those people. That's pretty amazing technology that you can target it down to that kind of, of a statistic. So we're going to get into talking about Facebook. We're going to get into talking about YouTube. A lot of, everyone knows what YouTube is. In fact, YouTube's been around since 2005. Take a look at some of these facts here. The, the timeline, and, and this is just a good example, everyone, to show you how quickly things emerge and change. 2005 was not that long ago. YouTube is five years old. Okay, it's it's not something that is uh, been around for ten or fifteen years. We're talking about very new technology that's so rapidly changing. February two thousand and five, the uh, the do the domain name was actually registered. Okay, the first video was uploaded on April twenty third, two thousand and five, and the first official beta launch was in May. By December, it was an official launch, and there were eight million videos watched a day. It launched official. Think about that. It launched its, its official opening and it had 8 million videos watched a day. That is just extraordinary. And you know what? That's a huge number, but look at where it's gone to in 2009, 2010. January 2009, U.S. Congress and presidential channels launched. You can have your own YouTube channel, guys. It doesn't cost you not even one penny. It's free. You can have that same thing. March 2009, Disney signed the deal. April 2009, the Peabody, I mean, you can read all these things. You can just search for these statistics online. I'm not going to bore you with them now. But it, it's just absolutely extraordinary. In five years, as of last October, now one billion views per day. That is just amazing. And you can have a share of that magic that happens on YouTube. You can launch your own YouTube channel, and that's what we're going to be talking about. We're going to teach you how to shoot Internet video with, again, something as simple as a flip cam, real, real easy, how you can customize your YouTube channel. I'm going to show you all that stuff during our three-hour workshop at the Cadabra Business Building uh, days. Now, here's another quick little tidbit here is that uh, you may have seen this if you keep up to date on technology articles in the newspapers and online. Well, Google is, is, is working on uh, televisions, and um, Apple Computers already has televisions that you can buy where you can access the Internet right from your flat screen TV in your living room. Well, those, all of those things, you know, the future, as we remember it, maybe from movies like Back to the Future Part Two and, and, and science fiction movies, uh, all of that future is very near at hand. I mean, we now have the Apple iPhone 4 where you can actually video chat with someone from your cell phone. And the technology with video is growing and growing and growing so much that, Mark, we might have to consider doing an entire video workshop next year because it's going to be even more advanced at that point. And uh, we'll have to talk about that because video is becoming... Uh, it's over 60% of the content online right now is video-based. It's, it's, it's huge, Brad, and, and uh, I need to learn this just like the next guy. I'm serious. It's, it's that important. Yeah, and Mark, you will be there taking notes, right? I will. <laughs> I am. <laughs> By the way, if, if, if any of you, my, my fellow panelists here, uh, have the computer, um, their computer speakers turned up, you may want to lower that because I think we're getting some feedback, and I see a couple people have mentioned that. Uh, so if you're, list, if you're on the phone with me right now, guys, uh, just uh, go ahead and turn your speakers down on the computer so we eliminate that feedback. Um, just a couple more quick facts here just so you can see this. 24 hours of video uploaded every <laughs> minute on YouTube. You guys are going to become part of that statistic. You are going to learn how to do that, and you're going to learn not only how to upload video onto YouTube, but how to put that 
onto your website in a matter of minutes. Now, I want to launch another poll here. We're going to check out social media, and we're going to see uh, also your online presence. I'm very curious to find out what your biggest online challenge is, because David and I are uh, still working on some additional time that we have in our presentation, and we want to really customize this to you guys. People that are, are going to be attending the business building workshop, people that are coming uh, to Cadaver that uh, are thinking of maybe signing on to the business building workshop. Well, the workshop's all about you. Business Builders is all about you. It's helping you improve your business. So tell us, and we really are going to be looking at these these numbers here and, and tailoring some of our presentation to uh, the, the responses that we get. Got 49 percent, 53 percent of the vote. Excuse me, 56 percent in. Let's see if we can get that number up because this is really important data for us. All right, it looks like uh, we've got some really interesting numbers coming in here. Uh, let's try and get that up a little bit. We're at 64 percent of the vote. Let's see if we can get that past 70 percent, guys. Just answer quickly for us, uh, and we'll see if we can get in a little bit more info. Come on, a couple more people, 69, one more person answer. There we go, 71. You can keep on voting. Got five, four, three, two, one. All right, with 74% of the vote in, 42% is equal uh, for using videos to promote myself online, and 42% also says booking shows and making money online. That is extremely important for us to know, um, and I'm really, uh, I, I'm glad to hear that so many, uh, that, that's not going to sound right. I was going to say I'm glad to hear that 42% of you can't get your videos online, <laughs> but I don't mean it like that. What I mean is that I'm, I'm glad that that's the challenge because it's something that, that David and I can help you with, and not just help you by showing you, here's how you put a YouTube video up, but I'm going to be giving you information on how to shoot videos, how to... Um, act in your videos, how to really drive home and get the videos to work for you, uh, and really get the numbers of views on your videos up, and so on and so forth. So we're really going to focus on that, and of course, actually booking shows online and making money online. Uh, David uh, Farr has been doing business online, you guys are not going to believe this, but he has been doing business online since 1999. Uh, David is, has been one of the pioneers of internet marketing. Uh, I launched my first website in 1999, and we have both been there each step of the way as the internet has changed and as the technology's changed. So we're not coming at this to you guys with, with just having read a book or two. I mean, we really, really understand this and how to use it to make money and to book shows online. Um, it looks like 32% of you guys are uh, interested in all of the above, uh, using social media, uh, is equal with updating my own website. Uh, so uh, those are both 26%. So I, I am really excited to, to see that you guys are, are interested in those topics because that is really what we are going to be sharing uh, with you uh, at, the, uh, at the Business Builders on Tuesday, the 10th, of, uh, the 10th of August. Now, I wanted to give you a little bit of uh, content tonight so that you guys can be thinking about this because one of the big questions I get asked is how do I create a website or, or a good website? And I've eliminated that word good. I've eliminated uh, and put in the word credible because that's what you really need is a credible website, a website that's going to actually do something for you. You see, David and I believe that a website, when it's a promotional site like we are talking about here, has two main purposes. Write this down. It provides social proof. In other words, the audio, video, written testimonials, the photographs that show you doing what you do best, that show you performing for that audience of kids pointing at you and screaming and laughing and having the best time of their life. The photos of you, uh, we showed a photograph earlier of our, of our friend Bruce in front of the White House when he performed there. That is social proof. Now, it doesn't mean that you need to go perform in front of the White House to have social proof, but you need to have the social proof that establishes you as a professional, and when someone visits your website, it strikes their interest. The second purpose of the website is to capture the lead. If someone visits your website, browses around, but doesn't request more information, doesn't call you, you've pretty much lost them. You've left money on the table, you've dumped it in the garbage, however you want to look at it, you've got to have a lead capturing device 
on your website. Those are the two purposes. David and I will explain all those in detail at the workshop. A couple other quick little tips about creating a, a credible website. When you're thinking about redoing your website or creating a website for the first time, you want to frame your business clearly in your mind. In other words, if you are the go-to school show guy, like our, our buddy Mark Daniel over here, Mark does pr pr predominantly, you do schools and libraries, Mark, right? That, that's correct, uh, re exclusively. I mean, exclusively, that's, that's, exclusively. Yeah, exclusively. So when we, were, when we go to Mark's website, and I won't go away from our presentation here and actually go to his website, which I could do, Mark, but we won't do that. <laughs> we, we would notice, though, that his, web, his website doesn't uh, talk about magic for all occasions. It doesn't advertise him offering corporate work and, and, and entertainment for birthday parties. He's got a very clear frame in his own mind of what his business is, and that's one of the keys to having a credible website, eliminating the I do birthdays and I do corporate and I do schools and I do libraries and churches and all the other things that we might do, and I'm not saying that you can't work in multiple markets, but many people have that all grouped together on one website, and that's one of the biggest ways that you end up stepping on your own toes and shooting yourself in your foot, because of the example I'll give you is if I, God forbid, was having a heart attack, I would want to go to a cardiologist for him to examine me and crack open my chest to do open heart surgery. I'm not going to a general practitioner to do open heart surgery on me. Uh-uh. I want the specialist. Well, your customers want the same thing. Do they want to go to the do-it-all magician? And when they go to his website, they see that he's a corporate guy, a birthday guy, a school show guy. Well, he's just lost credibility because he says he does it all. And even though you and I know as magicians we can work in multiple markets, to the customer, it looks like we're a jack of all trades. That's not what you want to do. You want to frame your business. Also, if the theme isn't clear to you, it definitely won't be clear to your customers. So again, if you're a corporate performer, you've got to have that corporate feel to your website. If you're a birthday performer, it's got to look like you are throwing a birthday party right on your website. Another quick little tip is select a domain name that matches your framing. Nothing will kill your credibility faster than using a URL that's not like that, okay? Using a URL that's something like some crazy name uh, that, that just doesn't make any sense or using one of those free, uh, free website domain names that might be, you know, http slash homestead.com slash magicalguy1.html. Uh, that doesn't do anything. Get yourself a domain name that represents you and what you are branding yourself as. Again, in our presentation, we're going to be going into Internet video, social media, email marketing, Google AdWords, blogging, web design, and so much more. It's all going to be jam-packed into this three-hour Internet marketing hands-on workshop, which is going to be on Tuesday, August 10th, 2010, at the Cadaver Business Builders. Now, those of you guys that are attending just the regular part of Cadabra, you will not be able to access this information. Um, this is just for the business builders. So uh, if at all possible, I strongly encourage you guys to clear your schedule on that Tuesday night and join us uh, for the business builders. And, and Mark, they can access everything by going on to Cadabra.com or, or Cadabra.org, and they can register for the business builders right there, correct? Absolutely. And just give them a rundown quickly. What are they entitled to when they register for business builders? Well, the business builders starts with you guys on Tuesday evening, the tenth, mm -hmm. uh, from seven to ten for three hours, and then all day uh, Wednesday during the day, we'll have uh, Joe Leffler, B.J. Hickman, uh, Brian Daniel from Creative Magic, and uh, and Emmanuel Shaboom. Shaboom. Uh, yes, and we've got uh, we've got some of these guys standing by. As a matter of fact, Brad to uh, yeah. to chat with. Absolutely, absolutely. So, guys, make sure uh, if you are at all available to do so. And the price, Mark, what is the price for registering for business builders? I let's see. I'm gonna. <laughs> you know, I have to go look myself. Okay, uh, well, you go look that up. 
I, I just want to show you a, a couple quick examples here. Uh, here's an example of uh, someone that had worked with me, uh, one of my coaching clients at one point, and uh, he had a website that was okay. You might look at this and, and say, well, Brad, wh what are you picking apart that website for? It, it's not really, you know, there's nothing wrong with it. But this was his corporate website. He was trying to book co a company picnics and company holiday parties and company events from this. And it doesn't really look like a corporate website, calling himself an honest deceptionist, personal dirt. That was his bio page. Just didn't look right. Well, we took this old style website and we updated it and we made it into something that is a blog-based website, which David and I are going to talk about, how to have a blog-based website that you can update. And if you just look, I mean, it is night and day, the difference between this old, dingy website and a website that's modern, it's current, and it actually represents this gentleman as a professional in his particular field, something that you guys can do, too. He's got video very prominently displayed here. He's got a lead capture device. None of this is rocket science. It's just the real results that you, too, will be able to walk away with when you attend our Internet workshop. Here's another uh, actual case study from someone else I worked with, another one of my clients, Jason Michaels. And he just talks here. I won't go into all the details of it, but he just talks about how working with me uh, has enabled him to uh, build his business in terms of marketing, PR, and business ideas, and his business is now in the best position it's ever been in. I share that with you guys because it's so important that you understand uh, if you really want to succeed when it comes to doing marketing on the internet you have to start doing something now and in the case with with this gentleman that you see on your screen now Jason he really wasn't doing much when it came to internet marketing and then I started working with him and helping him along the way and he's now doing better than he's ever done before so I am uh, certainly looking forward to uh, seeing you guys at the workshop and working with you that's what it's about working with you on your business on Tuesday August 10th so I will see you then and it is now time to introduce our friend from uh, the south of us, I guess, uh, in uh, Puerto Rico, Shaboom, Emmanuel Shaboom. Welcome once again to our webinar. Shaboom, I'm here. I'm very happy to be here with all of you guys uh, sharing some information. And I think uh, Brad is right. Definitely the Internet and video is uh, every time coming more and more accessible to everybody. And we definitely got to record and do good video when we do magic on, on TV. Uh, basically, uh, I will be talking on uh, Wednesday 11 at 1 p.m., and uh, I'm going to talk about TV and magic, because uh, one of the things I've done for the past uh, 13 years is uh, my production of a kids' uh, TV show down here in Puerto Rico, and it's also been in the U.S. on the kids' Hispanic networks. And magic uh, is very different when you do it on TV from live uh, performances, and I think Mark did a great job uh, putting everything together because, like Brad said, the Internet is going to be very important, and it, it keeps getting uh, important every day, and also the video that you do for that uh, uh, TV uh, and recording is very important also. So I'm going to talk five top uh, lists that I have here on uh, the things that I thing you should work on when you are invited to be on TV or when you record your own uh, video for the web. Uh, first thing is that you got to look professional and accept uh, constructive criticism. Uh, for example, uh, you got to ask uh, when you get invited to a TV show, uh, one of the things people forget to ask is how, 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 how much time do you, do you need to cover on the TV? Uh, because many producers, when they invite you to do a TV show, they probably have already a, a, a time limit on how much time are you going to be on, either one minute, two minutes, three minutes. And that's something very important for you to know because that's going to help you to pick which tricks are you going to do on TV. And, and that way you're going to be ready when, when, when they need you. Also, uh, make sure that you have time for your magic tricks or if they just want an interview. Uh, some people just want an interview because you're doing an event and they actually don't have time to see a whole trick. So you got to also know that uh, it's, it's very important to, to have that information before you get to the station or before you record the video. Um, another thing that I'm talking here in the first uh, bullet point is that it's very important to listen to constructive criticism. Uh, I, I know when you do shows, many people come to you and say, ah, you were great, it was nice. But I think it's very important to ask, what can I change? What could be better? 
I remember when I used to do shows when I was a kid in, in Miami growing up, and Fantasio used to watch my shows. And I asked Fantasio, okay, I know you liked it, but what, what do you think I should change? What could be better? And, uh, and he was very good at that and, and telling you what, what can be changed. So, so that's point number one. The second point that's very important when you do uh, shows on TV or you get invited to a TV show is um, don't miss the opportunity to, to do good public relations because uh, that's a great uh, time to meet people at the studio, to have the opportunity to talk to them. And also, if, if you're getting interviewed, talk about your future plans. Uh, you could talk also about any upcoming shows or any kind of events that people can follow you up. Uh, like Brad said, many people uh, can follow you on the Internet, so make sure you get that across uh, when you go to an interview because uh, people that might be interested in, in you could follow up after they watch your interview, so you don't waste time there doing the, the interview. Also, it's very important to listen to the questions and answer back at the uh, host because sometimes you're so excited about doing your magic trick that you forget about uh, the question or you don't listen to the question that the host is asking. And I think that's, that's super important because that way you really can, can make sure uh, you answer the right way and you, and, you, and you still get your information or the things that you want to say in those questions. But, but make sure you listen to the, to the host. Uh, because I've seen many interviews uh, of magicians that they get so excited about the trick that they just jump into the trick or they, don't, they just don't listen to the, to the host. Uh, I also very important is be prepared at all times. Uh, TV is very different from live shows. When I do live shows, I, and when you guys all do live shows, you got everything ready beforehand, and you, you pretty much uh, direct your time once it starts. But in TV, it's very different. In TV, you got to be ready, and they're going to tell you when are you on, and you have to be ready to go at any time. So have an extra trick always is, is good. Uh, and so you have it ready if you need an extra trick. Um, I remember once I got invited to, a, to an interview, and they never told me they, they wanted to, me to do magic. So I thought it was just going to be an interview about talking uh, about TV and, and how TV works for kids and all that. And uh, when I got there, all the other people that were being interviewed uh, were uh, either singing or doing, doing something. So I had to get somebody to get me a trick quick. <laughs> so I had to call my assistant and get the van and get, get it there uh, as soon as possible. And luckily, he was able to do it and get me the trick. But it's very, it's very important that you... You, have, you are prepared and you have extra tricks. If they need it, you're there. If not, you just keep keep going and and don't feel bad if they don't they don't want to watch it. I mean, it's not that they don't like it, but just TV is very quick and the and the time that you have or they have to to do the show is, it can change. So they you gotta deal with that and, and you also have to deal with that. Uh, also, very important, uh, try to stand out from the rest and make sure they will remember you. Uh, I don't not only on your performance on TV, but also make sure that you get the people in the studio to remember you. Uh, one of the good things about doing TV, especially for kids, is that you gotta show and don't tell. I mean, if you, you could talk all you want, but if you show the kids through the TV something fun, something uh, amazing, they will really remember that. Um, also, another great idea when you do uh, interviews on TV is, is use a host as your assistant because uh, that way it will be fun and the host of the TV show could always, you know, be part of, uh, of, of, of the recording and that will always help. And remember that magic on TV is also different because there's a lot of special effects that kids are used to watch already on, on, on TV. So uh, when you make something float, uh, they could probably watch that on a, on a movie. So you got to make sure it looks different. Uh, I remember I did a TV show once uh, with a person that was on a, on a wheelchair, and a friend of mine, and I, and I told her, uh, please don't move, because I used the ITR, the thread of the ITR, to attach it to her wheelchair. So I put the ITR there, and that's the way I made the, the bill float. And it, and it <laughs> worked great. <laughs> yeah, I did that. And I remember I told her, don't move the chair, you know, just keep it there, you know. And, and it was really, it came out great, but it was a, a big risk to take on a, on, a, on a TV show. So make sure that, that you stand out from the rest, but, but be prepared with tricks that look good, but the effect uh, does not look like a, like a 
special effect from TV. So that's very important also. Uh, always have time for your fans uh, and walk your talk at all times. Uh, by What I mean by that is that if you're on TV and kids are there live or maybe they, they people see you after the show, uh, keep your character uh, through the whole time. Don't finish a show and take off the, your jacket or your suit or whatever you wear and, and you know, come out of the stage, you know, probably maybe fighting because the trick didn't work or, or you know, being nasty. So it's very important that you, when you do the show, you, you stay on your character until you get to your car and out of the, the TV station because people are watching you all through the time after you record. And also very important, when you finish your show on TV, stay smiling because most of uh, the performance that I see, usually when magicians perform, they're not used to finishing the trick and stay uh, till the camera cuts away from you. And they may change the face or they may get sad or they may, they may you know, say, say some kind of comment. Uh, so it's very important that when you finish your show on TV, you stay you know, smiling, uh, freeze uh, until, until they tell you you can move. <laughs> because I've seen that happen many times before that the magician finished the trick and he just, you know, gets up or, or you know, moves or just doesn't, doesn't say goodbye to the camera. That's, that's, that's also very important. At, at my uh, lecture, I will be talking about uh, five more uh, areas that are very important when you do uh, magic on TV. Uh, here, yeah, I'm watching the uh, picture that I have there. Uh, that's actually a picture from the recording of, uh, of my TV show. And as you can see, uh, uh, at the same time I'm producing the show, I'm all tied up, <laughs> uh, literally. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah, uh, it's pretty hard to produce a show uh, with a straight jacket. But uh, um, I, I think TV is very powerful. We all know, know that. Uh, to give you some statistic, a, uh, a young kid watches uh, more than four hours a day of TV. And in total, watch, watches seven hours of total media. Uh, by, by that, I mean cell phone, internet. So we're talking about something that we all know is very strong. And I think uh, magic has its face on, on, on all of that. But we definitely got to do it right and, and, and do a, a good job so people really and kids uh, like what we do. Uh, because I think uh, the old, old fashioned way of doing magic uh, doesn't cut it anymore. And, and, and I, and I uh, agree with uh, Brass when, when he says that uh, Kidabra helped you out on, on, on taking your art to a next level. And I and I have to say that Mark has done a great job. I used to go to a lot of conventions before I started going to Kidabra, and now I just uh, do Kidabra, and I'm, I'm happy with that because uh, I, I think that's the place and time to meet everybody, share ideas, and keep uh, our art uh, going and getting better. It's time. Also, if you guys are interested, I have a website which is shaboom.com. You could visit it and you could see a little bit of the TV show. It's actually right now in Spanish, but uh, you could enjoy the, the, the pictures and all that. And if you want to learn a little bit more about my background, you could also visit, visit the YouTube and uh, search uh, under Shaboom, which is S H A B U M, as you see it on the, the screen. And again, I'm, I'm, I'm really eager and happy to see all of you guys uh, uh, on Wednesday, day 11, at 1 p.m. at the, at, at the Kidabra. Also, don't forget, if you are interested on, on going to the lecture, bring a, a, a magic trick that you may think will be good for TV. We're going to pick a couple of the uh, uh, people from the audience to have the opportunity to actually perform a trick as, as as you will perform it at a, at a studio. We're going to have a camera there, and we're going to record it, and I'm going to give you some feedback on that presentation because there's a lot of uh, tricks that work for TV. There's a lot of tricks that don't work for TV, and I think that's uh, important for all of us because you never know when you might get a chance and get invited to a TV station to do uh, some kind of interview or you get your own show or, or, or you do your web video. So I think we're right on track, and I'm, I'm again, really happy to be part of all this. So. Shaboom! Shaboom! <laughs> that, thank <laughs> yeah. you. Thank you so much. And, you know, for everybody listening, don't look at Shaboom's presentation as, oh, I'm never going to have my own TV show. Remember what I said just a little bit ago. With the technology that's coming out in these next year to two years, you can have your own TV show produced by you 
on your own YouTube channel, on your own video blog, and kids can be watching it in their living rooms on their giant flat screen television. That's the technology that's right here. So you would be so smart and it would behoove you so much to attend Shaboom's uh, workshop or his uh, presentation that he's going to be doing uh, on, uh, on Wednesday at the Business Builders because it is applicable to every one of us. That's right. That's right. And Brad, and by the way, just can you tell, I mean, uh, some of you have met uh, uh, Manuel, and uh, for those of you that haven't, even just listening to his voice, isn't he likable? Just, just hearing his voice, can you imagine how much kids take to him from the television show, that likability factor? Yeah. Man. It's such a contrast to Ken Scott when you listen to him talk. Um. <laughs> No comment, no comment. I, I got a drug with him from Atlanta to Tennessee. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent. Well, it is time to uh, segue into another poll here, folks. So let's uh, launch this poll. Mark and I uh, were curious about your Kadabra status. Are you an, a, a Kadabra International member or are you not yet a Kadabra International member? So tell us. Where you stand, what side of the aisle are you on? A member yet or not just yet? All right, it looks like we've got 70% of the vote in. Let's get it a little bit higher. A couple more votes coming in, 73 votes. Can we get it to 80%, guys? 80%, come on. 75%. And I'm raising, I'm raising my hand too, Brett. Oh, because because <laughs> you are that much of a member that you have to raise your hand. To. <laughs> I should have looked. I should have no, looked I, I, I a little harder to see that kid. <laughs> I know. I would like to say something once this poll is over, if you don't mind. Yeah, absolutely. We're, we we got to get one more person to get it over eighty percent. Come on, one more person. We're at seventy nine percent. Come on, someone, close down Shaboom's website that you're checking out right now and vote. <laughs> <laughs> don't make me start calling out names of people that aren't paying attention. I'm going to do that. We don't get to 80%. Let's see. It's just like being in school. Just like being Oh, come on. Uh, come on. I'm not We're not closing this until we get 80%. We're at 79. Someone's got to vote. Someone that's not paying attention. 5 4 Come on, Eddie Way. Eddie Way, Alan Smola, you're not paying attention. Come on, Bill, you're not paying. David Storms, Dennis Giovine, come on, buddy, you're down there in Jersey. David K is not paying attention, and he's on here with his secret name, his alias. I, see, I you see that too, don't you, there, Ken? All right, do we? Uh, uh, I can't believe it. All right, you guys are letting us down. Seventy-nine percent of the vote, man. All right, we'll close the poll anyway, and we'll share these results. We got 65% are a member of Kadabra, and 35% are not yet. Welcome, Kadabra folks, and, and welcome, folks, uh, folks on the way. And Ken, you wanted to share something? Yeah, I think that, you know, just to join this organization, I, I hear this all the time on the road that people go, uh, Kadabra, it's another one of those things you have to join up. Um, and, you know, I'm a member of SAM, IBM, uh, so I, and, and I'll get the other magazines like Magic Magazine. Also signed up, um, uh, speaking of David Kay, the uh, Magic Reel, the DVD, I signed up for that at SAM because I saw the value and have that Magic Reel. Uh, my point is, is that this Cadaver Journal that, that comes out uh, six times a year, I think is well worth the price that you pay to be a member just because the information. Every issue that I get, I always get something out of it as far as something I can use for myself. Uh, it's real stuff. So uh, it's the real stuff. Good grief. I was just sitting reading uh, uh, last night the, uh, the the Carnegie issue that's just out, mm -hmm. with Dean Allen Carnegie, yeah. uh, who's going to be with us at Cadaver for the first time this year. And I was reading his, uh, he told me about it, but I was sitting reading the, uh, the pizza, uh, the What's Next Pizza version, which is almost like it's impromptu. And I'm going like this. This is unbelievable, and uh, and you know, we've got stuff like that every issue. It's fantastic, and yeah. and uh, thanks thanks to Dean uh, again for that. So be sure and check your uh, your uh, Cadabra Carnegie issue, and take a look at that pizza. What's next? Uh, using the nail writer, amazing idea. Very very and cool. Very fun. Well, with that being said, it is time to welcome uh, our friend uh, from just a little bit north of me uh, here in New Jersey in the uh, Massachusetts area, uh, Mr. B.J. Hickman. How are you tonight, B.J.? I'm in a small suburb of Massachusetts called New Hampshire. 
Oh, uh, <laughs> oh man, I totally screwed that up. Let me, let's well, try that no, again. But, it's time to welcome my friend B.J. Hickman from uh, just the north of me in New Hampshire. We're going there tomorrow. We're going to Martha's Vineyard for a couple of days. I'm anxious to, to uh, have a couple of days off. Uh, but thank you very much. I uh, appreciate that introduction. Uh, uh, I do also want to give my recommendation to all uh, if you're not signed up for the Cadabra Convention, uh, uh, this is a lot of people that are, are helping one another. Uh, Mark was white, uh, right, like people like Eddie Wade uh, wants to learn a lot but has a lot to share. Ken Scott mentioned that, that we all learn from one another. Whether we're the lecturer that year or whether we're just attending, uh, you know, when we get chatting after a lecture or in between things or whatever, we, uh, we all learn a lot. I uh, also took a few other notes from when the others spoke. Uh, shaboom, uh, terrific ideas. Uh, we, we see the examples of uh, magicians that, that use uh, great technique on television and terrible technique on television with the show lately, America's Got Talent, uh, and some of the magicians that aren't making it on that show. Uh, it's interesting to see from one extreme to the other. Um, uh, also, uh, I'm looking forward to, uh, to to all the the web and the video and the marketing stuff that that uh, that I heard Brad talk about. Uh, don't go to my website until I get back from Cadabra, please, <laughs> because I need a lot of updating. Uh, there's things on there that uh, somebody grabbed a, a photo from my website and it was in the local paper to promote one of my shows this week and and they picked one when I had dark hair so those, <laughs> those things have got to come off and I got to get more video on there and, and, and whatnot I'm on the business builder day on Wednesday at 10 o'clock um, I have my, my lectures the 50 50 lecture uh, I have come up with 50 ideas that I'm going to share in 50 minutes uh, Mark Daniel challenged me he said you can't do it Hickman I we we watched the video of your lecture from two years ago you only had 34 ideas and it took you 90 minutes. How are you going to do this? <laughs> I, I can't believe, I hope you're kidding that you really didn't count my ideas. <laughs> but uh, we are going to get uh, get through it. We got some ideas for marketing, a credit card giveaway idea that's, that's kind of fun that may turn a few heads. It's not going to be a lot of theory and a lot of uh, how-to. They're just going to be bang, 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 one idea after another. Uh, a show and tell thing that you can use in your act for laughs, uh, some things on creating moments in your show, an idea or two for tax expense organizing, uh, an optical illusion uh, that I use for my bully prevention show, my uh, conflict resolution show. Uh, how do you do that? 50 ideas. Look at that. It's being written as we speak. Are you doing that, Brad? How it's actually, it, it's more of that fancy internet stuff that we'll be showing you at the business builders. <laughs> yeah. And also, for, for what it's worth, you know, I still have uh, Whiteout. I, you, you, we could use that on the computer screen, too. Does that work? No. Uh, I've got a digital, I got a little bit of a digital Whiteout, and there, we just used it. <laughs> there you go. Look at that. <laughs> but I'm going to give ideas on free advertising, technology ideas that, uh, that have come my way although I'm not there 100% with uh, technology, uh, but um, on, uh, all kinds of little things like that, 50 of them, in fact, uh, uh, 48 of them, you may say, uh, uh, I'm not sure if that would be for me, but if you can get a couple of ideas out of it, I think you'll find that it'll be, uh, it'll be worth your time. Uh, a couple of ideas, for example, as to, uh, you know, what, uh, well, here's one, uh, The Fat Max by Stanley. I saw this at Home Depot, and I said, "I got to have this thing. It's a, it's a uh, uh, a rolling uh, toolbox that is perfect for a side table if you put a little curtain around it. Uh, you look it up online by uh, Stanley. It's called Fat Max. And what I use it for primarily is to pack my whole beginner magic class in it, so it's always ready to go, and I don't have to throw things together when I go teach a class for a Parks and Rec or a library." Um, and uh, it, it opens up and, and has all these little compartments and makes it real easy for you to work from when you're teaching a class uh, specifically. Uh, another idea uh, that, uh, that I'll be talking about is, uh, is your, your own promotional things as far as what, what to call yourself. 
I'm, I'm, I lost that page, but oh, here it is. Uh, for example, uh, I use the entertainer who keeps getting invited back, or I might say direct from Hollywood's Magic Castle, or favorite at Hollywood's Magic. Oh, by the way, the uh, the photo that you're looking at, if you're on the uh, B.J. Hickman page there, that that picture was at at the uh, Magic Castle that was on the front cover of the Linking Ring, and and just another good thing about Cadabra. When, when my picture was on Linking Ring uh, cover last month, uh, I, I got emails and calls from several acquaintances, magician friends from all over the world. And uh, one, of the, one of the guys, some of you may have heard of Connie Ray. He's got a few books out. He's from Sweden, mm -hmm. uh, terrific magician. Uh, and, and, and one of his... And member, by the way. He is? Yes, yes. yes. One of his goals is to attend the Cadabra convention. Uh, he and I have kept in touch for years and years, and when he and some friends were going to be in L.A., I, I hooked him up and got him into the Magic Castle, uh, which is no big deal at all, but he was so appreciative of that, and that was one of his uh, dreams. And the other one is to attend the Cadabra Convention. And I said, talk to Mark. You'd be a lecturer there. You know, I mean, <laughs> he, he's, he's a, uh, a smart guy in magic and has some... Uh, terrific ideas, but uh, uh, where was I? Uh, but So I get all kinds of little ideas like that at, at 10 o'clock on Wednesday. I'm looking forward to every minute of it, uh, and I'll be there for most of the, uh, the conference, so you could take me aside and, and ask any questions, uh, whether, it's, whether you wake up at early enough to hit the 10 o'clock lecture on Wednesday after being up late learning all this internet marketing with Brad. Uh, but certainly, uh, you know, set your alarm early and come come and visit, and we'll uh, fill you in on a bunch of things. Uh, that's it for now. But uh, oh, and and the best to Bruce Bray from me also. I, 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 when I think of Bruce, I think of in one of his lectures at Cadabra, he uh, he was talking about how how he takes calls with his people in his office when he's booking his birthday parties, uh, and one of the tactics that he uses that, that just puts a smile on my face when I think about it is that when somebody calls and they say, are you available for October 15th, Saturday, October 15th, and he'll say, this year? <laughs> to, to remind people that they better book in advance because he's one busy magician. Uh, and uh, get well soon, uh, Bruce. We, uh, we enjoy your work very much. Yeah, thank you so much, BJ. That is uh, that's terrific, and I will certainly uh, I will certainly be there at 10 a.m. Uh, probably working on maybe three or four hours of sleep. But well, on uh, the promo titles, pick something. You know, you wrote that I see to the yeah. left of my picture. Pick something that that's you, the birthday party magician. A 10 years of experience translating to a worry-free experience for your birthday party. The preschool. Uh, prankster, uh, Mr. Funny Bones with a giggle guarantee. Mm -hmm. I, I just brainstormed myself, and I was trying to come up with, with things. Uh, has performed in 235 cities and towns in Southern California. That, that's not me. I mean, I just made that up for somebody <laughs> that might be in that part of the country. Uh, uh, the, 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 if you do school shows, the magician who never misses a day of school. Oh, yeah, the magician yeah. who turns a profit for preschools, for fundraising shows in preschools. Uh, the Tennessee trickster for all 95 counties. I went online, there's 95 counties in Tennessee. But, <laughs> you know, little, little things like that that you can uh, use as catchphrases to uh, help promote and turn your image into something that people might ask more about. Uh, but I'll, uh, I see it's getting late here, so I'll, uh, that's my, my portion of the evening, and I hope to see everybody in a couple of weeks. Excellent. Sounds, sounds great, BJ. All right, it is time for our final poll of the evening before we uh, venture over to our uh, buddy, the legendary Joe Leffler. Uh, our final poll this evening is about your interest in Kadabra. Uh, and what we mean by that is not how interested in Kadabra are you, but what uh, of the Kadabra areas of study do you find uh, the most helpful to you or are you most interested in learning about? So you can vote on any or all of these, but uh, some people like to learn most about how to uh, build your show. Others are about marketing your show. Uh, of course, I like is... character devil. 
the the character. Yep, uh, character uh, development and oh, uh, development. I oh, know oh, you character oh, devil. Character <laughs> devil. <laughs> and uh, performance technique, routining, new material, all that good stuff. What what are some of you guys? Ken and uh, Mark, uh, Emmanuel. What what do you guys like? BJ, what are what are your favorites? Well, this is BJ Hickman speaking, and and all of those things is is what I enjoy learning about. Uh, I'll tell you, you know, the tech stuff, uh, using backdrops. Until I met uh, Magic Backdrops, help me with his name, Brad. Jeff Jones. Until I met Jeff Jones, I, I wasn't using any kind of a backdrop. And I'll tell you, when you set up a backdrop that's colorful and fancy and exciting looking, the kids just go, wow. And it, and it sets you apart from anybody who just rolls in uh, a box, opens it up, and starts doing a, a magic act. That, that backdrop, the, and, and, and I never used one until, uh, until uh, three or four years ago when I saw that one first. And I said, gee, this has got to be me. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, piece of I got. Magic, I'm sorry. Magic, magic backdrops was born at Cadabra accidentally with the Jeff. Jeff had come for the first year. He happened to have his backdrop in the car. Brought it in and showed. That was showing everybody, and they're like, "We want one of these." And he's like, "Oh!" Uh, <laughs> he was born there that day. <laughs> Amazing. I, I hope he's done well. Brad, Brad for I, me, uh, I, sure I, I think. Has, but Brad, this is Ken. Uh, Marketing day, I, I, we had marketing day, but now it's changed. But uh, BJ, you'll like this. My first year at Cadaver was in Orlando, and you were lecturing that year. Uh, and I just there was so much stuff that I learned that year that I, I just I was like a sponge, just soaking everything up. But I think all the stuff you got listed, Brad, as a quick poll, uh, I, I think I get something out of all this. But especially marketing, uh, the tech stuff that we get from you know from Joe is priceless. Uh, is you know I, I get new stuff from Joe every year as far as New sound stuff from my show, so yeah, no, absolutely, and and we can see by the numbers that I'm sharing with you guys right now, with 74 percent voted, uh, 83 uh, percent are interested in the character development and the performance technique, 76 percent marketing your show. I mean, those are real high numbers up there. The tech stuff, 60 percent. I mean, everything is above 50 percent, um, which uh, which is huge because that means that everybody is truly interested in learning a little bit about. Uh, everything and and especially you know the, the areas uh, that are are definitely important you know the tech stuff as you guys had mentioned and and the the performances uh, you know learning new things about how to improve your performances the marketing I mean all of that is there's there are they're all equal when it comes to uh, to the quality of of your product which is your show so um, so yeah so I was glad glad to know that we've got all that available and more waiting for you at Cadaver. And I mean, we didn't say the auction. I know that is a big favorite of, of many people's, right, guys? Absolutely. Can't wait to bring bring stuff for that. <laughs> Fabulous. Well, uh, we are going to segue into our final presenter of the evening, and I hope he's gotten his uh, microphone issues worked out. Joe, can you hear me? And more importantly, can you speak to me? It looks like we cannot get Joe on here. Let's see if he's uh, typed me anything about any type of problems. Uh, if you get a second, let's see if my mic is working. Joe, are you talking to us? I guess he is not. Uh, or his microphone. I'm sure he's talking to us, but his mic's just not working. Brad, Brad, when this is B.J. Hickman, when when you were talking with me and 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 you couldn't hear me, I was trying to speak, but I had not hit my pin number yet and when I did that that's when it it became clear to me just by the technology on on the form that I was now on and then you saw me and and, and unmuted me again okay so maybe um, that's the case for it, it might be the case Joe I, I I know that you are trying to speak through a microphone instead of the phone line um, we can go on to something else briefly uh, and if you could call in on the phone line that's under your audio panel there and just remember to use that pin as uh, as BJ just pointed out uh, and we'll, we'll try that just call from your cell phone or your landline instead of the microphone and uh, we will get you on board with us and uh, while we are trying to see if we can get Joe on to the call 
uh, we will just give you, uh, I'll turn it over to Mark and he'll give you a little bit of information uh, about Kadabra and, uh, and how you can register for the conference. But also don't forget, at the end of the presentation, just a short while from now, we're going to be, I have got all the names of everybody on the phone right now and on the web. And all the little pieces. And all the little pieces. I've got it all written down. They're in the Dove Pan of Luck and uh, we'll be revealing uh, the winners in just a little bit here. So Mark, take it away. Tell people how they can come to Kadabra. Oh, yeah, Kadabra.org, um, uh, you will find, I, I was talking to Max Howard a couple of days ago, and he's like, Mark, I need a little piece from the newsletter. I said, uh, Max, go to Kadabra.org, uh, second row, uh, first button on the left, uh, punch e-news, and he did, and he's scrolling down, he's like, all of this is here, he's had no idea. I said, Max, it's, it's amazing, and it really is, and thanks to uh, uh, our friend uh, Dennis Michael, who makes the uh, Kadabra website happen uh, 365 days a year, year in, year out. Uh, it's an incredible thing that uh, Dennis does to, uh, to, uh, uh, for Cadabra and, and uh, to help uh, facilitate and make all this happen. President of Chapter 1, uh, Central Jersey, Mr. Dennis Michael, thank you, sir. Uh, and, uh, of course, Brad, you're president of Chapter 10, mm -hmm. uh, North Jersey. Yeah, uh, both uh, very successful cadaver chapters. The Jersey people go, yay, go team! Yay, Got Jersey! Some other uh, <laughs> cadaver chapter folks from around the country on with us. And uh, is that Joe? Is that Joe calling yet? No, I, that's someone. That's one of our panelists who. Uh, okay. <laughs> just has a phone call. And, uh, you can register twenty four seven uh, online on cadaver.org or call uh, the, the business line three three six four. Nine two seven eight seven zero, and uh, fun little piece of trivia. Uh, you know, Pigeon Forge is caught by the Travel Channel, um, uh, one of the top family destinations in the United States. Uh, it's the gateway to the Great Smoky Mountains National Park, which is the most visited national park in the country. Uh, Nine million visitors each uh, year, and um, uh, years ago, our friend Terry Evanswood, who has the wonderful show at Wood, uh, Wonderworks at Pigeon Forge. Uh, fell in love uh, as a kid going with his family on vacation to the area. And uh, the same happened uh, with me and my family when I was younger growing up. It just, there's just something that just continually draws me back to the area. I just, uh, I love it. It's, uh, it's interesting. It's unusual. The people are friendly. Uh, there's stuff to see. It's uh, tacky vacation wonderland. It's you know, and it's beautiful <laughs> outside of the tacky vacation wonderland. Uh, it's it's a magical place. And what you've got place uh, you got around. Dollywood right around the corner, and Dollywood around the is corner. Is always and fun. You got Terry uh, Terry Evans was down the street. You got Dwayne Laughlin across the street on the other side. You got and uh, Sean. You got, uh, the, Sean um, Sean Paul is uh, at the uh, the Beyond Belief show with uh, with um, with Dwayne Laughlin and uh, is there any other magic there or is it just those two guys? I, I and and Michael Keating is also Michael Keating that's right show there yeah, yeah. I, I I've heard that it's that he may have a show there this summer as well so that's another another fun one to catch yeah, not... um, and then of course some uh, there's some magic at the Comedy Barn occasionally or the David Fee Productions and. Uh, I know Black Bear Jamboree has an incredible uh, ultraviolet black light sequence in their show that is uh, 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 quite quite magical. And uh, and but you know one of my favorite things to do, by the way, when I'm in the area, and this is one of my top secret tips, um, that um, is uh, so much fun every year uh, before Cadabra and after Cadabra, I have the best time walking and visiting all of those uh, those tourist shops uh, and attractions, and I find so many props for my shows and get so many ideas for my set design from uh, from those places. It's 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 out it's just unbelievable. So I've, uh, one one of my one of my favorite little tips for the for the area. Take some time. Wander around. I know Mike Bent does this when he's there, and Michael come up to me. He says, "Have you been down to this shop? Did you see this?" And I'm like, "Whoa, no, I gotta go." And uh, we we have the best time finding finding cool, unusual props. Excellent, excellent. Well, uh, I don't think uh, Joe is going to be joining us. Joe, we'll give you one more chance. Here is your audio working. Can you try and talk to us a little bit? 
going once, twice. Okay, looks like we're having some audio problems there. Well, and uh, for Joe, <laughs> Joe, for uh, for Ken and I and so many folks is the go-to guy. Uh, when my uh, sound crashed uh, a couple of days ago, um, I called Joe, and Joe's like, Mark, do this, do this. And I'm like, I can't. He's like, yes, you can. He said, listen to me. And by golly, he knew exactly what to do, and uh, I, I fixed it and uh, was up and running again. And he's been that way for years. He just is an endless font of knowledge. Uh, and he's got great stuff to share at his seminar. He's going to update us on the, uh, the changes in the laws uh, about wireless frequencies. It's been very confusing to people, the wireless microphone frequencies. Uh, some have been uh, deemed unusable for us uh, on the federal level here in the United States. And uh, he's going to kind of help uh, uh, us with the understanding of the law changes earlier in the year in that regard, because some of the uh, wireless microphones we actually were using are no longer any good. Uh, but um, he's got some insight on that. And uh, plus, he goes to the trade shows with uh, all the new uh, electronic gizmos and toys, and stays uh, up to the date with the uh, up to date with the cutting edge uh, new stuff. And he's going to have some reports for us on uh, on those items. So Excellent. looking forward to, to seeing and hearing Joe, uh, yep. one of one of our favorite people, Santa Claus himself. Santa Claus himself, Mister D- the legendary Joe Leffler. And I think I think you guys can all see that uh, when you attend Kadabra, just talk to anybody uh, from uh, your local area, anybody that you find online on uh, on various forums, Facebook friends. Uh, you will find that that everyone agrees that when you discover Kadabra, it's like discovering a pot of gold. Uh, there is just so much to learn and so much fun to be had, and and uh, on a personal level, develop lifelong friendships that uh, that are certainly uh, worth every every penny and uh, and millions more that it costs to uh, that you will ever experience with Kadabra, because it is uh, it is that magical place. And with that being said, it is prize time. I have got my Dove Pano Luck. And, oops, I dropped one. Make sure that stays in there. Everyone, get, everyone has a fair chance in here. So the first uh, person I'm going to draw is going to be the winner of the uh, Top Hat Treasury of Family Entertainers uh, and the How to Become Busiest Birthday Party Entertainer in your market. And... That is going to Anthony Christian. Uh, Anthony, you are the winner of uh, my lot of stuff. Uh, Anthony, do me a favor. Drop me an email with your uh, mailing address to uh, brad at makemagicmoney.com and uh, give me your mailing address where I should ship this to you, or if you are going to be attending Cadaver, I will simply bring it with me. Uh, whatever you'd prefer, either way, I am fine with your decision. Next up, winning the Terry Herbert uh, DVD from Cadabra and Mark Daniel, we have got Rodney Goodman. So, Rodney, if you uh, would drop Mark an email at KidabraConf, C-O-N-F, that's KidabraConf, C-O-N-F, at AOL.com. Uh, yeah, Mark, this was the D- this was the DVD that uh, David K and uh, Terry recorded. Is that correct, Dave? Yeah. Mark? Oh, yeah, F- absolutely fantastic. Unbelievable stuff there. Yeah, great DVD. So Rodney, uh, drop a line to Mark uh, for that uh, prize there. And finally, for Ken's library DVD, we have got that going out to B Rad, the kids' magician in Las Vegas, Nevada. So yeah, B-Rad. Uh, B Rad, B Rad has it already. He doesn't need it. He does. He really have it? Uh, I'm sure he does. All right. Well, I tell you what. We will. No, uh, if, he, if he doesn't, I'll send it to him. But I think he's already got it. Okay. B Rad is the president of the Las Vegas uh, Cadaver chapter yes. and yes. star of the only uh, kids show on the strip in Las Vegas, the super super duper kids show. Uh, B Rad, how about that? Yeah, so uh, B Rad, if you uh, let's see, did you type anything in? Type in the in the question box, B Rad, if you have that or not. And uh, if you already do have it, Ken will give you something else. I will volunteer Ken for that, right, Ken? Yeah, I'll send him a uh, a 
a Cadabra birthday CD set. Out <laughs> of Mark Daniels' uh, warehouse of Cadabra Adam, stuff? Out of Mark Daniels' account. <laughs> they, oh, beautiful. Great guy, no. yeah. I'll send him a Silly Billy CD. Yes. <laughs> That is it. Since he wouldn't fill out our poll earlier, he, uh, he, he's he got to give everyone something for free tonight, maybe. Uh, you, you talk to Silly Billy about that. But uh, those are our winners. Uh, Anthony I'll talk Christian to you about that. for MakeMagicMoney.com, uh, Rodney Goodman for Kadabra.org, and uh, B-Rab for KenScottProducts.com. Congratulations, all you guys. Those are our winners for this evening. Well, we are going to give you guys the last opportunity to ask some questions. There is the uh, website, cadabra.org, to register for uh, the Cadabra Conference uh, and the business builders or and or. Uh, sometimes people can only make it to one or the other, but uh, we would love to have you there for both uh, the business builders and the uh, conference. But uh, your, your, your attendance at either or would be, uh, would be fabulous. And um, let's see if there's any questions here. It looks like we don't have any questions. Um, oh, uh, actually, Anthony Christian, uh, the address is Brad at Make Magic Money. Again, Brad at Make Magic Money dot com, and just give me your mailing address, and I will uh, I will ship that off. Or if you're again, if you're coming to Cadabra, I can bring it there too. Um, let's see. Eddie Siller says libraries. Oh, okay, that was just a response to our survey from earlier. Um, got a lot of Joe Leffler comments trying to get on the phone. I'm so sorry, Joe. You had so much trouble trying to get on there. Uh, we have a question that I I don't know if it's really not something that I don't think any of us are the experts on this. Um, from John Nolander wanting to know the best way to break into the church kids market. Do any of you guys have a, a suggestion uh, for him? Very Mitchell, John. When when you're at the if you, if you're coming to the conference, he is the guy. He is the go-to guy on that. Great. And uh, that uh, that seems to be all of our questions. Let me just check the chat box, see if there's anything in there. No, there doesn't appear to be. So uh, would you guys like uh, anything to let, – let's give everyone an opportunity to kind of wrap up. Uh, Mark, uh, any last uh, comments? Uh, Brad, I, I'm, uh, thank you uh, for hosting tonight. Thank, thank you all you guys for uh, – for, uh, for, um, Coming and speaking, uh, Manuel, all the way from Puerto Rico. Uh, BJ, thank you, sir. Kenneth, uh, always a pleasure, my friend. Brad, uh, thank you. Um, uh, Joe, we know you're you're with us. Uh, uh, thank you. And um, uh, of course, we miss David today. And, uh, uh, our thoughts to Bruce, uh, and looking forward to seeing uh, as many of you as we can in a couple of weeks uh, at Pigeon Forge. Uh, we are going to have. The year of the incredible. We cannot wait. We're so excited. We will see you soon. Ken, any last thoughts from you? Yeah, I look forward to seeing everybody there. Uh, it's going to be a fun year, uh, as always. And uh, I, I think that there's going to be a lot of new faces this year as far as lectures and uh, go. I think that's, that's a big plus. Uh, often you, I hear that this is a lot of the same lectures. But again, the, the same lectures that come every year have different content. <laughs> But I think this year, there, Mark has really assembled a lot of the new faces lecturing. So I'm excited about that myself. So uh, does that, that's Ken's Pizza calling now, I think. <laughs> I, I don't know who's got business calls coming in this late at night, but, man, I want to listen to your lecture. <laughs> uh, Shaboom, Emmanuel, do you have any last words for us? Again, I'm really happy to be part of this. Uh, Kidabra is something I always uh, look forward to. And I think if there's anybody listening that's uh, serious about performing for kids and family, I, I, it has to be there. That's the place to be. Uh, believe me, I've been doing magic for, for like 20 years, and that's a place to be uh, on August. And I hope to see everybody there. I, I hope people come and, and, and talk. I'll, I'll, I'll be really glad to talk to anybody that wants to say hi and, and meet you face-to-face. -face. So see you soon. Shaboom! <laughs> and uh, BJ, any last uh, words before we sign out? Are you still with us, BJ? That may have been BJ's phone ringing off the hook that he had to get. Uh, but but uh, but yeah, BJ. When I said shaboom, maybe he you know he was gone. Yeah. May, oh, that was it. The magic word shaboom. That was the problem. 
Sorry about that. Sorry about no, that. No, 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 that's all right. Just he's he's probably already waiting for us in Pigeon Forge, but I know he uh <laughs> certainly excited with it, with all of his ideas. And I just would like to uh second and and third uh, all of those comments and uh, again those uh positive and, and warm wishes for uh, for our buddy Bruce Bray. We're we're thinking about you and and uh we will uh, have you on here next next July so you can share with us uh your uh, your wisdom with with everybody on the uh, Cadaver webinar, and uh, and I, I thank you all for joining us this evening. It's it's been a pleasure. Thank you to Mark uh, for uh, agreeing to do this, and and to Ken and BJ and uh, Manuel, and uh, of course to Joe Leffler. We uh, I will make it up to you in in Pigeon Forge somehow. I don't know quite what the technological problem was with our audio, but uh, maybe you have a solution for it because you are the audio guy. And uh, I just want to close by by leaving everybody uh, with that quote that I started us off this evening uh, from Marianne Williamson, uh, where I said, our greatest fear is not that we are inadequate, but that we are powerful beyond measure. Give yourself the opportunity to grow and become powerful beyond measure. And, and one of the best ways I know how to do that is what Mark highlighted and, and, and all of us highlighted uh, this evening, which was uh, all of the fun that there is to have when you're learning and sharing uh, in, a, in a wonderful supportive environment where everybody is equals, we're all on the same team, and that is uh, Team Cadabra. So I hope to see you uh, in Pigeon Forge uh, in just a couple weeks. And uh, until then, this is Brad Ross for MakeMagicMoney.com signing out, saying do what you love and love what you do. Love what you do. There you go. Take care, everyone. We'll see you in Pigeon Forge. Team Cadabra. Bye-bye, <laughs> everyone. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Night, John Boy. Good night. <laughs>